Hi, and welcome to the first part of this tutorial featuring the periodic table. In this video, I will be helping you form the first 20 stops of your Memory Palace route to recall the periodic table. In a previous tutorial, I gave you some idea of how to construct a Memory Palace that had 12 stops. And within these 12 stops, I helped you remember the 12 animals of the Chinese New Year. The periodic table though, is a much more advanced memory palace project that requires not only a much bigger palace, but one with not 12 stops, but 118 stops. In a later video, I will show you how to convert a number, say 98, into an image. Once you know this system, which is also called a number peg system, memorizing the periodic table will become much, much easier. Now I'm going to give you an example. 98 in my head is represented by a bath tub and inside the bath is a surfer surfing. This is because surfing reminds me of California and therefore I can instantly see that bath equals 98 and the image reminds me of California thus 98 the element 98 is Californium. But like I say though you won't have to worry about the number peg system until I do the video later on. But it's not too difficult and with a little practice you'll wonder how you ever did without it. But for this video I'm just going to go through the images for the elements of the periodic table. But until I show you the number peg system I would suggest putting a marker within your memory palace every 10 or 15 elements that we learn just to make navigation easier. How should you place a marker you ask? Well it could be just about anything. Maybe it's a golfing flag, or even someone you know who has the first name Mark. It doesn't matter. All that the marker will do is show you that will show you the element you have just observed represents another grouping of 10 has passed. So by placing a mark at, say, element 10 or 20, you'll know that you've passed another grouping. Now, if you're confused by this marking system, don't worry. I'll tell you when to insert the marker as we go along. Let's just begin a journey through my own memory palace to get some idea of what's going on. So I close my eyes and I walk outside of my front door. It begins at, at my front door. Now there is an image there that tells me it's the first element, but for simplicity's sake, I won't mention the number images, only the elemental images. So I exit my front door and the first image I see is a fire hydrant. Now this is a great image for element number one, because element number one is, a, is hydrogen. Now hydrant and hydrogen obviously sound similar at the beginning, but a fire hydrant also carries water, H2O, water, so that's also very good. So hydrant, I see a hydrant and I think hydrogen. Now the trick here is to imagine the fire hydrant bursting and soaking the front door around me. As usual, there's no need to rush and it's worth creating a really vivid image. As I said in a previous video, if you can make this image strange or bizarre or inappropriate, so much the better. I turn around and over a short distance, I see the neighbor's bins. Tethered to this, I see a collection of balloons. Now I see these balloons, there's many different ones like birthday ones, love heart ones, whatever, but they're floating and they want to escape the tether, but they're tied to the bins. Now when I see these balloons, I think of helium. Now the image chosen is not really important. and You can change the image to anything you want, as long as it helps you think of helium. You may even imagine someone's heel, because when you mentally say the word heel, you'll end up very close to saying helium. Here's a tip. There are many ways to associate the elements. Helium being involved in balloons may make you think of its function as an element, which is great for those simple elements. But the higher up the periodic table you go, the more difficult it might become to associate a given element with its uses. This is where you would use a principle I'm going to call the sound like principle. For instance, Element 110 is 
Darm Stadium. Now, I don't know much about Darm Stadium, so I turned it into Tar Stadium and imagined a massive stadium slowly filling with tar. Tar Stadium, it's not such a long leap to Darm Stadium. So when you can't think functionality or use, think of a sound-like system. Moving on, I see my own bins and by these is a large battery, which reminds me of a lithium battery. It's not enough merely creating a still image here. The object needs to be doing something or have something done to it. Make your images interactive somehow. Perhaps the battery is leaking everywhere and its corrosive fluid is destroying the stuff around it. This is how you get proficient at building memory palace. Leaving the battery behind and moving on to my front garden. And when I say move on, I mean I walk the steps in my mind. I walk the same route and I imagine the feel of the stonework under my feet. Try to make everything real within your mind. On the lawn, I see a beryl coronet. This is named after Sherlock Holmes story and so was relatively easy to construct. But you may know someone called Beryl or perhaps you could imagine Meryl Streep after the sound like principle. Remember to make the image moving interactive somehow. Over by my fiance's car, I see a creature and is this creature a boar? And from there, it's not such a huge leap to boron. Perhaps you could imagine the boar wearing a dunce cap. And from there, you might associate boar with moron to get boron. Again, these are only ideas serve to nudge your own imagination. If I turn around, I can see my neighbor's car and a huge pencil is scribbling away upon the car and wrecking it. The pencil reminds me of carbon. Here you can go with that image or create one of your own, either by the function of carbon, a use, or based upon the sound like principle, carbon, carbon. Exiting the first part and moving away and further along, I travel to next door and I'm about to knock on the door when I observe a beautiful revving car and from the exhaust a blue flame comes crashing out it's 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 an amazing image well it might be just that I've seen one too many fast and furious films and know that this car is equipped with nitrous oxide here nitrogen comes to mind remember to play around with the word nitrogen to form an image that you would readily associate with it, either by use or the sound like principle. Okay, the name is not in, but the car's there. So I exit the property and at the end, edge of the road, I'm greeted by a scuba diver who offers me the tank on his back. Well, obviously I think tank, oxygen tank in this case. Now I'm gonna refuse the tank that he's trying to give to me, but I'm gonna carry on. Moving on just a few feet further, I see a giant bee holding flowers. The bee, for reasons that will become clear in a later video, is the number nine. And the flowers I associate with flooring. This is only because of the first sound being similar, but it works for me, fluorine flowers. So it, it just reminds me of that, but you feel free to pick something else. Okay, number 10 then, we're on our 10th element and it's the first landmark element and this is neon now place your marker here or imagine a bright neon sign spelling out the word 10 but either way you should place your marker here and neon think of a use or sound like principle to help you remember neon an association so for this for this video you're already halfway there so practice what you've learned so far, but don't panic if you forget an image or even several. You may be very new to this and it will take practice to create an image that is so strange and weird that your brain can't help but remember it. When you have finished watching this video, decide on your images and perhaps every pair of hours or so walk your chosen route again, adding more detail when needed. Okay, let's move on from my own memory palace as I start down a hill, which will inexorably lead me to a shopping mall. 
Element 11 is a giant salt shaker in my head, which is tipped over, and now I can see a large amount of salt being spilled. Salt is sodium chloride, and thus sodium springs to mind. Remember to use the use of sodium or a sound like principle. principle. It's your choice. Now the spilled salt shaker is lying next to a bus shelter and inside this bus shelter is a large magnum ice cream. Why magnum? Well element 12 is magnesium. See here I have used the sound like principle although the usage for magnesium is easy enough if I had chosen or gone down that way but I chose a sound like principle so magnum magnesium. Moving on a little further down the hill, I see a mummy wrapped in foil. Foil, since that reminds me of aluminium foil. The associations need to be simple enough, and I can't stress this enough, the associations need to be simple enough that you can get them readily enough, even if you haven't seen the Memory Palace for some time. If the associations are too abstract, you risk losing the meaning of a remembered image. So you might remember the image, but not what it's associated with. So I'm going to walk a little bit further down the hill and I see a large computer chip which reminds me of Silicon Valley and hence the element silicon. Always make it interactive remember your images cannot be still they need to be moving. Now I'm going to look over to my left and I see the large motorbike outlet filled with beautiful looking bikes motorbikes it's, it's a great place and there's a lovely cafe at the top of the building. Now, while it's mostly empty, um, here I create an image. I've put a large flossing machine designed for those who worry about such things while they consume their lattes. Flossing? Why flossing? Well, floss, I'm reminded of phosphorus. And because that's our next element, and that is why I chose floss, as it sounds like the initial part of phosphorus. Again, the sound like principle. Now, the entrance to the bike outlet is on fire, a huge fire that's swallowing the entrance. Now fire I associate with sulphur. However as you can see you might choose sulfuric acid and create your own image from that. Now I'm going to come back to to where I was standing because I'm merely looking over here I haven't left the actual path I just looked up and over to the bike outlet. But I'm standing at a grassy bank where my dog usually likes to do his business and yes, I always pick up bathroom, so please don't worry. But on this grassy bank, on the first part, I see a swimming pool, a large swimming pool. And this I associate with the cleaning agent chlorine. The water looks very inviting, but I have to move on to the next part of the grassy bank, where I observe Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Aragorn, to my mind, sounds a little like Argon. Aragorn, Argon. And hence why I chose him. Here, Aragorn is in pursuit of some ogres or trolls, and thus his sword is drawn. You see, I add detail to make the image not only clear, but easily memorable. The final part of the hill is where I observe a lamppost. At the top of the lamppost, a banana hangs. This is because I know that bananas contain a large amount of potassium, but perhaps you could imagine a rear end smoking some substance or other as in pot assium and thus maybe that is even more memorable as i look down i see a skeleton dancing underneath the swinging banana and this tells me that this element is calcium i always associate bones and skeletons with calcium and because calcium is our 20th element here you'll need to place your second marker so imagine the skeleton interacting with someone called Mark or with the golfing flag you've placed down or whatever you're using as your marker. So now that we've gone through the first 20 elements, I will show you the images again to remind you. But feel free to play back this video again and again for a reminder. Soon you won't need to. Here are a few tips to aid you in building your memory palace. Tip number one, your memory palace needs to be bright, brightly lit. You can't have dark spaces. You need to see these images clearly. 
Tip number two, you should have very well-defined stops, bins, things that stick out. Tip number three, you'll need to walk the same route over and over again. This will help seal the path into your mind. And soon you'll be walking it very, very fast. But at the beginning, go slow, take everything in. Tip number four, if you can walk this route in the real world, this will help you really visualize the walk again later on. This is where using real spaces that you can walk or visit are even better than perhaps virtual ones. Although virtual ones can be used, but if you've got a real world palace to start with, that's even better. Create, this tip number five now, create easy associations. Remember I said earlier, you need these images to be easily represented by the association you're trying to create. Tip number six then, visit your memory palace at least once a day for a week and then increase the spacing between visits gradually. Now, I want you to have fun with the memory palace and so in the end, I want it not to become like a chore to visit your memory palace, but something you do to relax. I've often used my memory palace to actually fall asleep at night to visualize and, and to walk the palace. So I, I use it to relax, to for a whole host of things, not just memory. Your palace is there to, to find refuge in, to find sanctuary, to enjoy, be a space upon which you can um, immerse yourself. So it shouldn't be that hard, but visit your memory palace at least once a day for a week, preferably more, um, so that you can get these images sealed tight. Now that concludes the first part of the periodic memory tutorial. Now, if you need any help, please comment below or if you need further tips or anything, or you're having an issue with one of the images, let me know and, I, and I'll answer and I'll get back to you. But uh, thank you so much for watching and keep tuned for the second part of the tutorial where we'll do the next 20 elements. Cheers.